Bellevue Paws first gold. We have taken the liberty because this ain't your average gold bar, so we'll just superimpose how they should have put the announcement on. We're going to rip through some quarterly highlights from the week. Percy, so they produced 132,804 ounces at an all-in sustaining cost of US 937. Min res. Bold Hill transaction expected to complete November. Genesis for this quarter. They are mining at a lower cost on an all-in sustaining basis than St. Barbara. Silver Lake. You'd say Genesis's stepbrother. So cash and bullion. Uh, ended at 369.8 million. It's West Gold boys, they did report a cash build of 25 million, but you can see the lift in working capital of 18 million because 10 million of that was the sale of the Alto and Musgrave shares. Righto, g'day money miners. End of the week, nearly bloody end of October. Boys, we're going to rip through a lot of the quarterlies we missed through the week due to the, you know, the big uh, Azure and other other lithium news to get the get the gold flavour back into money and mine. We also got the, there was first gold out of Bellevue. We have got a bit of news for old JD's ding 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 at WA one. And Mr. Rigardino. And Mr. Rigardino, and obviously not me because it's gone up. <laughs> All so, right, so should we give a bit of a flavour what we're going to talk to, mate? We've got Bellevue, WA1, Perseus, Mins, Genesis, Silver Lake, West Gold, Calidus. They're all getting a shout out today. Yep, ripping, ripping through. Right, sponsors for today. Now, for based on Rick, Rick Ardinio's pitch, we've got a new sponsor on board. We're proud to present them today. And this is dear to my underground mining heart, KCA Site Services. So now, machinery hire for underground. The underground environment, boys. She can be a rough one. They've got ITs, not the IT department, not the software side, integrated tool carriers. You would have seen them up at Big Bell. Look, at here's one here, a little, little thing with a basket on the front. Wow. They, they, I would not recommend to drive it when it's like this. <laughs> Doesn't really work too well. Hopefully no one was injured in the process. They've That's got fine. ITs on hire. Uh, now, they've also got Normet transport vehicles. You can see one here. Good for cart and bloody shit around underground. <laughs> Built for the rough underground environment because, as we can see from this picture here, <laughs> this is what happens when the underground environment takes one if, and the Normet charge basket is zero. So if you, if you, Squashed. If, you, if, you, if, if that happens... What you got to do? You got to get in touch with KCA. You got to get KCA. <laughs> so, if like pretty much, if any of your ITs or your Normets or even they've got a Sam Vic five five one underground truck, if they get towed up and you need one urgently, give KCA a call. They've got them on hire. They're built to service the uh, unpredictable underground mining environment. So, Adam and the team at KCA, thanks so much for coming on board and uh, look forward to uh, presenting more Rip underground Cheers, mining KCA. ads. And we can't forget our OG sponsors, Anytime Exploration Services. Now, we talk about the anytime, anything. Here it is here. We'll go through a contractor recruitment, permanent recruitment, exploration equipment, hire, core storage, core cutting facilities, drilling, contract, consultation, soil sampling, vehicle hire, everything exploration. Exploration. We've gone any altitude, any depth, any location, any, any time, any anywhere. Commodity. All the time we talk about them, I didn't realise they did soil sampling. Oh, but now I know, mate. Well, <laughs> did, was soil sampling part of everything? Yes, I suppose it was. So any time can do it. And uh, Seamus and Victoria Murphy. So and look, KCA and the other sponsors we've got coming on board next week. We cannot thank you enough from the money of mine team for supporting us and because it means so much that all these businesses who all started out like us are getting behind us. So thank you very much. Legend. Thanks, really guys. Really appreciate it. Right, boys, let's get into it. Bellevue Paws First Gold. Now, we want to say first off, congratulations to all the construction development team to make this happen. A lot goes into it. Everyone is keen to see how this high-grade underground mine performs. Now, Look, we've taken the liberty, based on the thematic around Bellevue, we see the announcement here. Look at that beautiful gold bar, but... What's it called? BG... What's it called? BG... BGL... Zero, zero. Zero, zero, one, or is it zero? I think it's a one in there, but look, we have... (laughs) We have taken the liberty because this ain't your average gold bar, so we'll just superimpose how they should have put the announcement on. This is one from one of those special right. mining fronts, wasn't it, Maddie? Not the yeah, it was. The, the, I think they're all green. 
Strala said every every all body's green, mate. So just look at the <laughs> announcement here. We think the gold bar should have been presented like this. <laughs> now we can. Uh, that's for the YouTube because we all know it's a green gold bar. Well done, Matty. Well done. And this is um, part of a broader category of just uh, announcements that we missed during the week, as in and there's quarterlies we missed during the week too. So the yeah. second the second one. Uh, is I think WA one is worth talking about again. So ding ding ding. Full disclosure, we well JD and I own some of this stock, but the hits at Looney yesterday included some of the best results. Well, the best results to date from step out drilling. So headline result thirty one meters at four point six percent. Stocks up forty one percent this week. Four point six percent niobium for people that don't know, which Not, is yeah. bloody she ain't your common element we drill for around here. So I think the, the excitement the excitement really is that they've extended the ore body. And the, the mineralization, the known mineralization out to the to the west by a couple hundred meters, as well as the the grades you're seeing there, 31 at 4.6 percent is uh, some of the best hits they've had to date. Yeah, I love um, love every time uh, an announcement comes out from this company because the title on the ASX like platform every single time is um, West Toronto Looney Assay Results. There's never anything else. It's just like and every single like if you go back over the last like. I don't know, six or so announcements. They're all titled the exact same thing. Probably uh, don't, half of them probably don't even have assays in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the template. Yeah. Um, Very good. There's no, there's no robust. There's there's none of that. So They don't need it. The superlatives yeah. are minimal, which is always High boring. single digit niobium. That's all they bloody need. Ah, good on <laughs> yep. your WA1. Righto. African, well, let's go for a bit of a, we're going to rip through some quarterly highlights from the week. A lot of the gold but gold ones. Um First off, we'll start with African gold producer Perseus. So they produced 132,804 ounces at an all in sustaining cost of US 937, which is around 1477 per ounce Aussie. Available cash and bullion, lads, US 594 million bucks. September cash quarter build of US 72 million. So printing cash over yep. there in Africa. And look, if you look in regard to M and on the M and A front, uh, our uh, my great friend is he your great friend as well, Reg Spencer? You've I, never, I've never met him. I've never he's, met him. he's a great friend of mine. Can, from Canacord, his note from, highlighted from the, Inverell, no less. Right? From Inverell, I was his ball boy. <laughs> Bloody, this is a momentous occasion in he my was life. Ball boy. Your claim yeah, to he fame. Was, Reg was in one of the greatest <laughs> high school rugby league teams in Inverell history. I'd like a I was one tennis of the, when he said ball boy. <laughs> no, no, one of the state. Well, Phil Bailey, one of the state of origin players for New South Wales, was the captain, yeah. Reg, and they played a Sydney team in Inverell. Um, and beat him, but Reg bombed a try in it. So, ah, there you yeah, go. I was a ball boy. Um, so back to Perseus, mate. Back to Perseus. So they, Reg reckons they have to add about approximately 250,000 ounces in group production by FY28 to maintain these current production levels. So I guess with the current cash balance debt, uh, so they've got US – No debt. No, no debt. Uh, they've got US $300 million in undrawn facilities. So I guess it primes them for – Future M and A, yeah. the time frame unknown. So we've fleshed out in the past that they had their Sudanese growth project that's um, fallen over, given the the unfortunate events that have happened in country there. So they're you know they're primed a lot of cash. Do they do they distribute it or do they keep their keep themselves on their toes for potential M and A? I like well, this. be leaning towards not distributing for that future production. They do. Gap, they've, got, they've already got a dividend policy and a dividend, but you know I'm sure they'll look to. Um, buy stuff when it's cheap and um, when, where the opportunities pop, pop up as well. Yeah, Percy I mean, says it's historically been pretty pretty opportunistic. So yep, I, lo- I love the title of Katie McCutcheon's research note when the quarter oh, came out, it? mate. She said, what to do with uh, plus $900 million Aussie in cash? That's the question, Katie. 100% right. <laughs> yes, what a problem to have. Right, oh, my, old, my old employer where I bridge tapes the stopes, Sandfire, Trav. What's happening over there, mate? <laughs> yeah, mate. So the uh, quarterly came out. It was a good one to read. So the group copper... Uh, production was up 5.5 thousand tons quarter on quarter to 23 thousand tons now. So that's you know almost a full quarter of Matteo um, is is delivered in that result, and 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 there's um, you know strong 8 thousand tons of copper. Um, eyes are on ramp up of Matteo. I think like the recoveries there 92 percent, which are in line with the budget and the DFS uh, costs are better than expected at US 165 per pound. Um, coming out of, out of Matteo there, which is, yeah, I mean, super positive, right? Soft near term or lowered electrical consumption in the ground circuit. But um, I'm I'm looking at the corporate side of things there too, Matty. So the, the net debt build went up um, as they drew down a bit more debt. That's now Aussie five, uh, 454 million financing costs higher. So 18 million bucks went to sort of, you know, interest and financing expenses there. 
And that um, that hurts. It's interest rates go up, pay more, and those are debt costs. But their balance sheet's in a lot better shape than it was 12 months ago. Remember 12 months ago, they did a, an equity raise for a bit of our balance sheet repair because they had to gear up so much to buy Matsa. That was an equity raise with within about a year of doing the big equity raise and, <laughs> and debt raise. So. Yeah, and I think, remember they bought, they bought Matsa at the top of the copper market. Um, yeah. And it's declined a lot since then. And bit of a look, it was the glory days at DeGrusa, printing a lot of cash. It was, it was uh, uh, possibly they needed to do stuff like this a bit earlier to make a bit more use of it because it's well, the it, other in a bad, the thing not as good a position. I think with Matza is like, um, I think, I, I just don't know if we can we can assess whether or not they paid too much just yet. Because the weird thing is like a- assets like Matza don't come up for sale very often. Mm. And when they do come up for sale, it's not like you could choose to buy it at a different time in the market. They, they definitely bought it at a, at the, at a higher level in the copper market oh, than, yeah, than yeah. it is And now. they paid yeah. – there's no denying like they outbid everyone else. It was a competitive process, all that sort of stuff. But is the is the real um, analysis you should do, you know, like 10, 10 years from now or seven years from now? Mm. Should at least stick yeah. to our uh, Diggers and Dealers Awards yeah. rule and say at least five years afterwards is when you can make the uh, the ruling on <laughs> but, M&A. But I suppose when they were probably looking at uh, copper projects globally when they had to grow sort of thing and, oh, geez, one, one and a half percent. That's bloody mm. low. That's what goes out to tails at DeGrusa because DeGrusa is five percent. <laughs> so it's probably like, but uh, you just highlights how one of a kind the DeGrusa raw body was. It's a bit of a precursor so, to a big chat on the copper market that we've yeah, got. Yeah, so we've got uh, next week bit of a tease. We've got a copper guru might it might be actually from this company talking about the global copper market. So very yeah. exciting to release that one next next week. JD, your your bloody best friend, the founder led business at Minres. Yeah, which so, one he is listening to the conference call? I think well, Travi, Travi tuned in for that one, but you know, was it as in, entertaining as the last one? Mate, they're always entertaining. Yeah, <laughs> I got some takeaways. Yeah, from from Minres this quarterly. Um, uh, this will be of interest to you, Maddie. So, Bold Hill transaction expected to complete in November, but there's uh, very limited disclosures that are allowed to be out until then. When they are out, I'll be reading them. Um, I'm really excited to read them too. I can't wait. Uh, there is a plan. We can't <laughs> tell you, but uh, with and then and then of course we, uh, they completed that uh, restructuring of the arrangement with Albemarle, and that sort of sees Minres um, taking back marketing from Albemarle, and of course Wajana Minres are now up to fifty percent, and um, and they're out of Camerton now. Um, Wajana actually produced its best quarter to date in in. This December quarter, expect those Bold Hill details. There's potential for um, announcement of FID on an energy project there. Also, look out for a sell down um, of 49% of a whole road, Onslow Hall Road. That'll free up capital to deploy as um, what, what for what Chris always terms uh, opportunities to, to that return greater than 20% on capital. Oh, you're on first name basis now, are you, Trav? Uh, no, <laughs> I'd love to be if anyone's got his number. <laughs> and they've really got to, you know, they've got to be aiming for those greater than 20% r- return projects given that their the debt they're paying is coming at a bit over 9% now. So it's quite clear what they're targeting there. Uh, I think his um, I think his goal is twenty percent re- return on equity. So, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's um. I looked at the Mount Marion Spodumene. I'm pretty sure it's a linear relationship on the. If you look at the SC six and the equivalent and the tons produced, it looks like Mount Marion produced at three point six percent their Spodumene concentrate, which is a bit even lower than what it was already. <laughs> right oh. Genesis, guys. Genesis. The the this is so. This is the first quarter. Uh, report after the the Gualia yeah. the Gualia takeover. But we the, did speak a couple of weeks. They pre released some of the information, the uh the ounces and, and sort of yeah. so on. But we are we're sort of itching to get a bit of insight onto onto costs, right? Yeah, so recent run rate for Gualia was hundred and twenty to hundred and thirty thousand ounces per annum. So they've produced thirty four th- a bit over thirty four thousand ounces, Genesis. So above that run rate. All in sustaining cost two thousand and eighty eight Per ounce, so that's compared to St. Barbara's two and a half thousand uh, in FY23. So they're already for this quarter. They are mining at a lower cost on an all-in sustaining basis than St. Barbara, of targeting more quality ounces. It appears a bit of a more high-grade approach. So they milled two hundred forty-two thousand tons. So remember, the Gualia's mill capacity is around. 1.4, depending on the rock hardness. I think softer it'll go up to 1. 1.8 or so, 1.2 for all hard. So, but 14, bit over 14,000 tonne of that was under an all purchase agreement with Linden. Doesn't include the 47 
and a half thousand tonnes they toll treated from Bellevue. But overall, they're still underfilling that mill by about 400,000 tonne for that for that quarter. So and we, we all know underfilling that mill and the mill operating cost is one of the big cost drivers at Gualia. So they had a cash build of 14 million to 170. But if you look at the waterfall chart here, there's a $23 million positive working capital adjustment. And they say in the footnotes, it's elevated due to the working cap position of Leonora being zeroed at the 30th of June, which was a mechanism in the sale and uh, purchase agreement with St. Barbara. So, and they've also got 35 million due to pay St. Barbara that's anticipated to come out in uh, 2024. So be obviously keen to see if they can keep up, uh, see if they can get some profitable ounces out of Gualia, but getting a bit more of that Admiral dirt and everything in there to fill that mill will be a priority. Yeah, absolutely. And while we're talking about Genesis, we may as well move on to Silver Lake. Oh, the... Uh, the, the oh. In the area, you could say, given that they picked up 11%, 12% of uh, Red Five. You'd say, you'd say Genesis is stepbrother. <laughs> I'm not sure if I would say that. <laughs> it was forced upon him. Uh, so what, Silver Lake, 65,070 ounces and 305 tonnes of copper at an all-in sustaining cost of 17.17, but I'd assume that all-in sustaining cost is a bit lower from the copper credits, same as all other how all other gold producers report all-in sustaining costs. Yeah, and a now bit of a tick there. Sugar Zone is off, offline essentially now. Yeah. It's capital being deployed at Sugar Zone though. They did, they did produce some dirt at Sugar Zone. They milled some dirt at Sugar Zone. Okay, but mining has stopped. Mining has stopped, yeah. Yeah, so they flagged, I think, $35 million for, for the financial year to be spent at Sugar Zone. Yeah. Really so, drilling out the, the ore body there. So cash and bullion uh, ended at $369.8 million. So free cash flow of 13 mil reported. So I remember they put $105 million into Red 5 in the quarter, and then they – drew down $130 million from a short-term cash facility. So you see that on the waterfall chart. So you look at the stock graph being pretty well beaten up after the whole, you know, between Sugar Zone and the probably the failed Leonora bid. Um, remember what they were trading at before that. So they went down into the low 80. So there's obviously there's been a lot of buying this month after they were sitting at that low 80 cent mark because they're back up to $1.04 at the moment. Yeah, so. they had an enterprise value at a time of 480 400 70 roughly million dollars given that large cash and bullion position yep. and the the falling market cap. Yep. So pretty uh yeah, definitely a pretty impressive cash balance. West Gold boys. 63,000 ounces at all in sustaining cost at 1935. So ounces down 8% Maddie quarter on quarter, all in sustaining up 9%, so you know, both of them going in the opposite direction yeah, from so what a lot you'd of, like. Yeah, a lot of that was driven by uh, so the 18% decrease in the big bell grade and a 16% decrease in the starlight grade. So they did report a cash build of 25 million, but you can see the lift in working capital of 18 million because 10 million of that was the sale of the Alto and Musgrave shares. So without that, they've only technically added all in 15 million to yep. the balance sheet without the sales of those shares. Yeah, and we'll flick up the sort of... The waterfall chart for those on YouTube Another to get a feel for it. I love a waterfall chart. Jeez, a bloody froth on them. How good is this? Go it's, finance. I'll tell you, uh, it's all about the order in which you show the waterfall to Matty. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go into that. Yeah, nice. Right. What is, what's the, what's well, the, have you got an example or? Well, quite. A, I, I feel like sometimes people try and show you a subtotal and they'll like, you know, do, do the, the line down. Just and watch it fucking do high and on then, the way. And then the, I guess like the nudge is look at this, look at this subtotal here. Things actually went up between the start and there and then there'll be some adjustments. Yeah, but, yeah. But those adjustments should have actually been thrown in before. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. So now we did see a bloody, uh, yeah. an example of that. Right, Calidus. So Calidus had a bit of a, they've had a 20% bounce this week. So they had the, uh, bounce up, um, which is a bounce, unless it's deflated. Anyway, um, they had the SQM investment into the, their pyrolithium interest. So, look, Warra Werner produced 13.7 thousand ounces at an all-in sustaining cost of 27.97 per ounce. That's all in sustaining. So, so effectively two thousand eight hundred dollars all in sustaining, which isn't even your your total costs. And you can see further down in the quarterly that the average sales price that they achieved was just under 2500 yeah. so not so, a good position to be in. Yeah, so because they they delivered 11.25 thousand ounces into the hedge, so that reduced the hedge to 95 thousand ounces at 23.67, so that's a that's where a lot of that drive is. Cause, so you can see the – and the impact of that, 
the cash flow from operations was seven point one million, but then there is a realised loss of six point seven million on the hedge contracts. So that's what the impact of that hedge is. Um, everyone's always watching Calidus cash. So they ended the quarter with 15 million. So that was down from 26 million the prior quarter. They paid 6 million off their debt. So the debt's now reduced to 75 million. Um, yeah, overall, overall their net debt has actually increased from 55 million to 60 million. So going to, they, they did mention higher stripping ratio from cutbacks and then there's going to be an anticipated lower stripping ratio next quarter. So going to have to see some operational improvement in the December quarter to, um, yes, get, yeah, those, the, get them out of the shit a bit with their cash position. Yeah. those, or, those And to keep delivering into that hedge and reducing the debt because it just becomes a hamstrung exercise, doesn't it? Yeah. You don't need to be a financial whiz to, to realise that you need to operate at a cheaper cost than you are selling. Hey? Even, I figured that, I can, I've even figured that out. So that's Fuck, you've come so that's, far. That's a sign of it. Boys, what else is going on? On you, Maddie. Mate, we've got a... We've got a lot coming up, right? So we we hinted at the Copper Chat, which we're going to release next week. We've got yep. a really exciting uh, interview to release with Anthony Kavanagh. He is the co-founder of Chester Asset Management. So we're going to release that one in two parts because there was lots to to glean off the the insights that he shared. And as we uh, have touched on earlier this week, we're going to iMark. Yes, yes. Can't wait. Even, uh, mate, there's even inquiries mm. about our event that we don't even have a time, location or anything for. That was just literally rock up and have beers. I'm getting uh, influx of already getting. Oh, all, yeah. I'm getting all, all the calls from uh, IR yeah. companies that I've are got, like, "Oh, this is from so and so. We want to talk about <laughs> iMark." Um, Man, yeah, got a probably couple. probably an announcement. Don't. We're not going to be doing interviews with <laughs> every company about your small cap on camera. Just mm. letting you know. So a couple of shout outs, I reckon, to to keep in the loop. Jump in the the Hooteroo chat. You can just scroll down on Spotify, Apple, or whatever. Click on the Hooteroo chat in the description, and we'll probably. Uh, drop the date, time, location, everything in there. And as yep. well as that, in the description, you can see the, the Hooteroo Herald. Jump on that one. We get, the we get Herald's a fly. Yeah. We 1,200 get a, people. We get a round out of, you know, everything we've done throughout the week. You know, Trav's top tweets, the the sort of more humorous side of the, the mining market and anything bit else we've sort of, of found interesting. A bit of hot news you've found in the That's it. pretty much nothing from me. But, like, it's mate, a, if you're looking for something to do on the shitter on a Saturday morning, the Hooteroo Herald – it's a perfect shitting distance. It's, like, it'll this get is an email newsletter, by the way, Money Miners. It's an email <laughs> newsletter, and but like perfect, like the perfect length. You won't get a dead leg. So that's it. Awesome guys. <laughs> Good stuff. What are any other bloody uh, admin? <laughs> oh, just oh, oh we've got the Hooteroo hats. We've just got to chuck them up on Shopify, so they will be available soon. We've got them embroidered, but there's a few that'll be absent from the initial sale because they're going to be part of a bit of an auction and we've also got a uh, an event to allude to yes early yeah. december yeah i think tickets will come up next week i think uh, i think they will yeah a couple um, it's going to be a couple hundred people all of like it's going to be a first in, <laughs> first in best dress to buy <laughs> tickets there's going to be tickets because we we just we didn't want to risk having five thousand rock up so they <laughs> thought we'd put some tickets to it you got to meet yeah. you got to meet all us all the lot of people that have been on the potty Hey, mate, oh, we'll flick the sponsors. So I've posted tickets. I posted in um, the Hoodoo group chat, like as a special uh, special guest at an event, who do you really want to see? So the first person that replied that got the most likes in the Hoodoo group chat said um, Gina Reinhardt as a special guest. <laughs> yeah. well, that was pretty funny. And then someone else said Ryan, in quotation marks, Uranium O'Sullivan. <laughs> Keynote speaker, Ryan O'Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might be good. So we're going gonna, gonna to try, uh, gonna try swindle some uh, draw cards in for our uh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do a bit of a live show. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna try and get a couple of big wigs and do Buddy, a bit you of a are panel. A big wig. You are. You're the big. Wig. So yeah. I don't know about that. I did replace Justin Langer in a golf day the other day. So. <laughs> like for like, hey. <laughs> like for like. Right. Oh. Uh, Thanks to all the partners. So, yeah, yeah. God, these are going to get fucking bloody hard to remember. Top of the show, our brand new sponsor, KCA Site Services. Give them a buzz. Follow. All sponsors have links in the show notes if you want to get touch in touch with them. Anytime expiration services, our OG sponsors. And we always can't forget our great friends at Terra Capital, the in, in uh, natural resources investing gurus. Yeah, we've also got SMEC to thank. Anything oh. electrical, mining related, get in touch with the guys. Blue boxes, green energy, whatever you need. JP Search, if you're, you're looking for a gig, if you're a corporate looking to play someone, get in touch with Zav and Michael. Any, any, just anything 
big four m and you want a gig, hit them up. And can't forget who Ryan O'Sullivan works for. K-Drill. K-Drill. RC drilling experts. Appreciate all your support and money miners. Have yourselves a bloody week. Good weekend. And we'll see you all in Sydney next week. Who to root? Who to root? The information contained in this episode of Money of Mine is of general nature only. It does not take into account the objectives, financial situation, or needs of any particular person. Before making any investment decision, you should consult with your financial advisor and consider how appropriate the advice is to your objectives, financial situation, and needs.